Well, to help us go through some of the numbers and some of the polling behind that historic result, I'm joined now by uh, Kieran Pedley, who's the director of politics at the opinion pollsters, Ipsos Mori, who were behind uh, the exit polls we were all glued to earlier tonight. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Um, but did those results pan out as expected or, or was it something of a surprise? Well, I suppose in some ways it wasn't a surprise because our final prediction poll showed a double-digit lead for the Conservatives and, and the exit poll also obviously showed a strong majority for the Tories and that's what happened. But at the same time, what this election showed is a fundamental realignment in British politics. And as much as your polling might show that, to see it on the ground in real results is still somewhat surprising when it actually comes to pass, I suppose. A lot of people here in Westminster are a bit shocked about the scale of Boris Johnson's majority there. Were you, were you expecting that? So a majority of around 80, it looks like, where, where we're going to end up in the end. Um, that's what our exit poll said. Our polling did point to a strong majority for Boris Johnson. Um, but the big question really was whether he could convert some of the strong public opinion polling numbers that we were seeing into seats on the ground in some of these so-called uh, red wall Labour areas. Um, so these are areas uh, that the Labour Party used to hold that voted strongly to leave the European Union in 2016. And the big question was, would Boris Johnson's message of getting Brexit done actually convert into votes on the day? And it seems like it has. Let's talk about the Corbyn factor. Jeremy Corbyn proved extremely unpopular, didn't, didn't he, as a leader of the Labour Party? How big a factor was that in this result, do you think? Well, I think it strains credibility to say that it wasn't a factor. We've been tracking satisfaction with Prime Ministers and the Leader of the Opposition since the late 70s. So this is when Margaret Thatcher was an opposition leader, so going back a very long way. And what we've found in our polling is that Jeremy Corbyn's had the worst uh, satisfaction ratings for any Leader of the Opposition since those records began. Going into Election Day, 68% of the British public said they were dissatisfied with Jeremy Corbyn. So this was clearly a factor, uh, and you, see, you hear that from Labour MPs on the doorstep, and our data backs that up. Let's talk a bit about tactical voting, Kieran, because going into this election, there was a lot of speculation that was going to um, play out here. Did you see that materialising? Well, I mean, ultimately, I think it was drowned out by the scale of the Conservative uh, vote share uh, in, in the areas that I've spoken about. But there were some areas. I mean, Northern Ireland, which is something that maybe people won't focus on too much in the fundamental narrative of this election, was a place where Sinn Féin and the SDLP would stand aside for one another to try and take out the DUP. And they did that with some success in Belfast. And now what we see is that Northern Ireland has more nationalists than unionist MPs. That's, that's certainly something to watch. Northern Ireland doesn't have an assembly at the moment, and clearly there's going to be ramifications for whatever uh, final trade deal uh, Boris Johnson negotiates with the EU for Northern Ireland. So, I mean, for Northern Ireland and for Scotland and other parts of the Union, there's going to be a significant uh, uh, sort of series of results to look out for in the future. And in terms of Scotland there, it seems the SNP really nearly sweeping the board. What do you put that down to? So they gained 13 seats, um, and Scotland's been very volatile in the last few years, it should be said. I mean, there is a strong unionist vote there, of course, and, of course, uh, the no side won that independence referendum uh, back in 2014. But I think, ultimately, the SNP has been very effective at consolidating uh, the, sort of the yes vote, of course, and the Labour vote. Um, now there's going to be a, a big debate about whether there'll be another independence referendum. It should be said that our polling shows um, the question of independence uh, very much split 50-50, uh, so it's not necessarily guaranteed that yes would win if there is an offer referendum and Scottish voters tend to say they don't want another referendum next year. Whether that changes though once the ramifications of Boris Johnson's uh, strong majority uh, yesterday uh, will be seen. Have the dividing lines, the fundamental dividing lines of British politics gone now? We used to think of Labour strongholds in the North and in Wales and Conservatives polling well in the South. Has that changed fundamentally do you think? Well, it's easy to see this as a Brexit election, and in many cases, that is the case. But th this whole debate about remain versus leave hides other demographic and cultural issues too. So whereas social class used to be the biggest divide in British politics, that no longer seems to be the case. In fact, age seems to be a good predictor of how you'll vote. Um, we saw that 18 to 34s showed a uh, plus 26 point lead for Labour, whereas among 65 and overs, we saw uh, a lead for the Conservatives in the 30s. So how old you are does dictate sort of how likely you are to vote one way or another. 
We also see big differences between big urban areas, which still tend to be uh, labour, versus smaller towns and rural areas that are more conservative. And education is a big dividing line in British politics as well. Uh, Tories tend that tended to do uh, less well in areas that had less graduates. So there are a number of different demographic factors at play. And even if Britain uh, is to leave the European Union, uh, as it looks very <laughs> obviously certain that it will, um, these the factors are going to be uh, lasting a lot longer than the question of leave versus remain. All right, fascinating stuff. Thank you so much indeed for your analysis. Sir. That's uh, Kieran Pedley of the Pollsters Ipsos Mora.